Hi, this is my review of the Psionic Beast Theory. The Psionic Beast Theory is essentially a collection of psionic empowered creatures that you can use in your Pathfinder game. If you saw my Ultimate Psionics review, and you can watch it if you want it in the links in the description below, uh, you know that I have a very high opinion of what Dreams Card Press has been doing with psionic classes, creatures, powers, abilities, etc. A lot of gamers didn't really enjoy psionics uh, until Dreams Card Press started polishing things and adding a lot of, of coolness to the entire thing. Well, let's talk about the quality of the PDF of the Psionic Beast Theory. It's very well organized. It follows the, um, the stat block arrangement that you have already seen in Python's Beast Theory. So everything is very easy to, to uh, reference and to, if you want to find a special ability or certain stats for a monster, everything is right there, very clearly, very well organized. And you also have uh, three indexes uh, detailing creatures by type, by challenge rating and by terrain. And that's very useful, especially creatures by terrain. If you like to create your own uh, random encounter stables, um, this is going to be very handy. And well, Let's talk about the content. Well, first of all, let, let me uh, tell you that it has a, a lot of good illustrations. This PDF has a lot of, of great images detailing all sorts of psionic monsters and, and seeing them in action most of all. Or, or even if they aren't moving, they're in a pretty cool pose. And well, the book starts with an introduction on how to use this beast theory. Uh, let me um, make it clear that you need the Ultimate Psionics book and the Pisces Beast Theory uh, if you want to use uh, all the psionic uh, powers and abilities and certain monster feats because, well, y you could use uh, this Beast Theory without them but you will be um, missing out on all those cool um, uh, psionic powers and all the, uh, the feats and this Beast Theory even includes some new monster feats and uh, a lot of information about how psionic focus and psy-like abilities uh, apply to the different monsters in this book. Well, there are certainly a lot of creatures and of course I haven't used them all, so I'll just uh, mention a few of them uh, and um, just uh, giving you like a general outlook of what you will find inside. Now, for, first we have Astral Constructs, that's pretty cool. They give you automatons, uh, specifically three types of automatons. You got automaton alpha, automaton beta, and automaton gamma. Now, all of these automatons uh, have their own uh, features, their own uh, powers, their ecology, and uh, all their abilities, and very easy to reference. And they come with um, great flavor text. Every monster in this book has some sort of, of flavor text. If you're a, a game master and you're using the creature for the first time, you have a small paragraph so you can introduce the, the players to to the, the the creature that you are using so for example let me read this paragraph about automaton alpha mm. this halfling sized construct is made of light metal alloys and crystal enabling it to move quickly and nimbly as it stabs and slices with its short swords you also have um, some uh, more disturbing creatures so for example you have the Brotoros that uh, seems very Lovecrafty. It's it has, you can see that how it has uh, like facial tentacles and a very I don't know fierce look to it. And it says this human-sized green and purple creature has two enlarged brain lobes. Its sharp claws can tear its victims to shreds. And not only is this creature very powerful um, in physical combat. It also has uh, special abilities such as Psychic Shriek and uh, Devour Sanity. Again, that's very Lovecraftian. You also have uh, monsters that are just very, really, really disturbing. Even though, the one thing that really um, makes this beast theory, like, I don't know, uh, stand apart from other beast theories, is that it combines uh, equal parts of, of coolness, of weirdness, and a and, uh, big disturbing factor to some of these creatures. And this monster here is called the, the Color in Darkness. What appears to be a sudden fog rolls towards you, a feeling of dread sinking into your bones. As the fog forms into a thousand faces, all stuck in the middle of silent screams, you understand why. And you even get a general uh, description of what this creature does, uh, what this, uh, its motivations are. So for example, here it says, 
horrifying in ways that would break the minds of most humans, colors in darkness are thankfully rare, usually formed upon the death of an innocent who was slowly and painfully tortured until its demise, a color in the darkness exists with an urge to bring others into its own miserable existence. That's, so that's pretty cool, and it's a challenge rating 9 creature, so you can certainly create an adventure around this, this hideous um, aberration. And then uh, we have other monsters such as the Corpse Beetle Swarm. Uh, the skeleton is obviously missing the skull and spinal column, but it is the hundreds of beetles that captured your attention. As you look on, they burst into motion as the swarm of beetles take flight for you. So this is basically uh, a beetle that uh, can devour a human being or, or any humanoid in seconds and uh, it has a very disturbing ability corp called S Scrape ID and it says Corpse Beetle swarms attack while emitting a subconscious psychic howl that claws at the terror centers of the brain throwing off their prey and making them easier to hurry and, cr and catch so it's an assault not, not, not just against your flesh but against your mind as well mm, you also have uh, some pretty cool psionic sci dragons so for example, the Cypher Dragon, th this is a very cool one. This dragon basically phases in and out of reality. So I I maybe you're looking uh, at some point and then you blink or you turn around and you look again and then it's there's this huge creature covered in like, kind of like power glyphs and I don't know, it's, it's very powerful. And you get different um, types of dragons according to their age. So you have a, a lot of flexibility when it comes to the challenge rating that you will face. Mm -hmm. You also have this one, uh, and it's called Adula. And Adula, it says, This three-eyed blue-green lizard has teeth like a piranha and claws of equal sharpness. It walks on its two hind legs, but its webbed claws and slick body make it well-suited for aquatic attacks. So this is pretty horrifying, it's like a walking piranha, and it has psy like abilities and other special abilities, such as a horse spew, and it says in horse spew, Adula stores its most favorite treasures inside a second stomach, which coats them in a preservative slime. As a standard action, the Adula may vomit these treasures at an opponent within 15 feet, who must succeed at a reflex save of difficulty class 13, or suffer uh, 2d4 points of bludgeoning damage and become entangled for uh, 1d4 rounds. And then you have uh, Iniro. And in Iniro it says, You notice that the plants near you resemble a humanoid shape, just as an eye appears in what looks like the head, it looks up, up at you and blinks. Uh, so, Iniros are a psionic symbiotic plant that feeds on life force and psionic energy. Iniros are quite friendly and personable. They approach potential hosts openly, happily examining what they want and what they offer in exchange, in the hopes of attracting a large and physical intimidating, intimidating host. These hosts uh, represent food, protection, and breeding for the Iniro, which drops seeds at the host location about once a week. So this is uh, not just another monster you can use, it's also a uh, very interesting creature to, to have a, a, a sort of encounter where you will match wits and, and you know, maybe diplomacy against them, or just uh, know, maybe you want to get some, some information uh, related to them, or, or just... Um, I don't know, get out of there without this creature engaging in some sort of symbiosis with you because they're probably not going to be too happy if you just try to talk to them and then, okay, bye, you know, you'll have to find some way to uh, getting out of there without establishing some sort of, of symbiotic bond. And then uh, you also have the Nomoi. And the Nomoi, it says, this insect-like creature is covered in a brightly hued carapace and has rows of sharp teeth. Its head swings your way as it disappears from view, only to reappear nearly upon you again. More uh, disturbing creatures that face in and out of reality. And they are pretty useful for ambushes. And, and because of that nature of facing in and out, it's going to confuse some of the player characters as, as they face them. However, I would uh, suggest that you don't abuse these uh, facing creatures, otherwise they're, otherwise they're going to become too common. And then you have uh, the uh, Reva. And the Riva is, um, this bad looking creature has an enormous eye in the center of its forehead and long legs that end in a single talon. Its body is a dirt brown while, while its wings are as black as night. Now, this creature, although it's just a uh, challenge rating 3, it has uh, telekinesis, prehensible telekinesis, 
and uh, bad empathy detect sapiens and force of thought so this creature um, in more ways than one is going to pull the rug from below your character's feet and they may actually underestimate it because of, of its size and and its apparent uh, fr uh, frailty so it's, it's very good for um, I don't know uh, just uh, pitting a bunch of them, maybe six or, or seven of these bad creatures against uh, mid-level uh, characters that probably become too overconfident when they face these creatures. And then you have the um, Udo Root. And the Udo Root, it says, what, what looks to be a handful of sunflowers mm, grows from an empty patch of grass. So, uh, Udo Roads are carnivorous plants that use psionic powers to overcome creatures that it then devours. The majority of the Udo Roads body is its root system, which hides below the surface of the ground, leaving only a few stalks that resemble sunflowers expo exposed. So, this creature feels kind of like, like a Venus flytrap in, in a metaphorical, metaphorical sense. And it has also some pretty, um, I don't know, surprising abilities because Udo Root uh, traits, the Udo Root can only be killed if its root is dug up or exposed, then burned, hacked apart, or otherwise destroyed. And it has a crown regeneration, and Udo Root takes no damage from having a crown severed or destroyed. A severed crown dies and can no longer be used to attack, but the Udo Root takes no damage penalties. As long as the root system remains intact, the crown regrows in about a month. So this creature, and uh, maybe the characters will face, will fight against this monster, and they will think that they killed it. And if they actually return to that area later on, they may be in there for a nasty surprise. Well, and and there are many m other creatures, just uh, quite a few creatures. Uh, this uh, PDF is about 105 pages long, so you have uh, a wide variety of creatures uh, for all sorts of terrains and adventures. And uh, the challenge rating is mostly in, in between low and, and mid-level, uh, however there are some higher level creatures, um, but mm, if you want to uh, challenge uh, characters, if you actually, let's say you're using uh, epic levels, you will have to modify some of them, but for, for most of the, the creatures they are pretty, there's a pretty good uh, variety of challenge ratings. Well, let me tell you what I think about this um, this beast theory. I think this is a great way to um, introduce a, a, a new level of freshness, of, of coolness, and uh, I want, well, how could I say it? Uh, maybe uh, just uh, elevate the disturbing factor of your games because these are, are creatures that have a lot of uh, mental abilities. I even saw some undead creatures here that have psychic powers and, and not many player characters are, are expecting Undead to, to have psionic abilities and that, that's very disturbing in itself. Maybe if it was like a, a leech or, or a mummy, they would expect them to have some sort of, of spell casting abilities or maybe a deadlock perhaps. But mm, here um, a normal Undead creature could represent a, a stronger challenge because the characters weren't expecting that creature to assault them with uh, tele telekinetic waves or something. Hmm, I do think that um, these creatures uh, could be deceptively more powerful than their the challenge rating uh, reveals them to be so. So if you're a game master or dungeon master, you should uh, take into consideration that a challenge rating 8 creature could um, maybe a, a, a challenge rating 9 creature because of the flexibility of its powers, of the things that you can, you can do. You have a lot of special abilities that have to do with mind control and, and, and controlling matter and, and as I told you, facing in and out of, of existence or, or the material plane. And so that's something to, to consider. There's really isn't, uh, there really isn't a negative point uh, to not purchasing this PDF, this uh, bestiary. If you enjoy mm, having a weird alien and disturbing monsters in your, in your campaign, and if you are using the the psionics unleashed uh, character classes, uh, these creatures are going to challenge them because otherwise you're going to feel like you're the only characters with psionic powers in existence. But this collection of, of beasts is going to to present an interesting challenge uh, for any psionic type character. Well. I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this review, if you have any, any comments or questions, please let me know, and see you later.